What's going on, everybody? It's Stas here. So the stock market did not do well today, guys. The S&P 500 down 47 points, down 1.4%. The Dow Jones went down over 370 points, down 1.3%. And the NASDAQ 100 got crushed, down over 200 points, almost 2% in the red and you guys read the title this is because of the stimulus situation and president trump tweeting earlier and he's instructing now his administration's negotiators to stop the cv stimulus negotiations and we'll go over that here in a little bit and we're also going to talk about in this video the stock market in general break down some technicals and also go over what i'm looking to do in this market and what i've been doing what's stocks am I in? What am I holding? Did I sell anything? Did I buy anything today on this weakness? We're going to talk about a lot today. So if you guys find value, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to check out all the free links down below, the Discord chat, the Facebook group. And if you guys want two free stocks from Weeble valued up to $1,600, those are also linked right down below for you. All you have to do is deposit $100, and that's how you get your two free stocks. So let's get into it, guys. Earlier on in the day, the market was smooth sailing, right? The market was smooth sailing. S&P opened up nicely. We ended up selling a little bit in the open, but ultimately we held the uptrend from yesterday. Again, it was smooth sailing. And then once two o'clock hit, here on the East Coast. Actually, no, it was a little bit after 2 o'clock, right around 2.30, 2.45 here on the East Coast. The S&P 500, the stock market as a whole, took a massive, massive hit. It went from 34.30 all the way down to 33.50 in the span of an hour, hour 15 minutes, which is a drop of, of, of about 2% in about an hour, which is unbelievable. And, and we'll go over the technicals here in a second, but just, just taking a quick glance, we got rejected right at 3430, which I've been talking about here on the channel, on the dot, literally, guys, 3430 hit. And it was almost like it was, uh, you know, it's just crazy. I don't even know what to say. I can't put it into words, right? It's almost like once 3430 hit, it triggered a ton of selling. And then boom, we got we got crushed, right? And, and that's that's not looking too good for the bulls, quite honestly, on a technical perspective. But it's not a complete collapse. It's not the end of the world that we drop so much because take a look. Overall, yeah, we're still holding a, a, an uptrend here in the past couple of days of trading, even with today's little collapse. Let me just quickly draw this for you guys. You can see with today's sell-off, we're still technically speaking at a higher low at about 3360 compared to the previous low in this uptrend pattern being around 3330 to about 3340. So tomorrow, watch the S&P. Is it going to hold this trend? Do we end up taking over 3380 again on the upside? That's going to be a, a, a signal that... We might be going back to test 3430, and this sell-off was just a simple bump in the road. But now with stimulus talks and with everything looking a bit bleak, to put it in uh, simple terms here, we might be going lower. You know, a downside target on the S&P could be 3330, which has been a support these past couple of trading days. And if that breaks... S&P 500 may be going down to 3280. That's the next big level of support if 3330 breaks. So what exactly caused this collapse? I mean, again, you guys saw it in the title. We talked about it for a second earlier. It was the stimulus negotiations, right? President Trump, and, and he's kind of suggest, uh, suggesting he's going to win the presidential election with this tweet. And I don't get political here on the channel, guys. You know, I don't talk about anything like that. Uh, but just from his tweet, you know how Trump is, too. I mean, he's... Uh, he, he loves, you know, saying all the good things he's done. He tweeted how the Democrats want $2.4 trillion of stimulus to bail out, and this is his quotes here from Twitter, the poorly run, high crime Democrat states, and, and this money that, that's wanted from the Democrats is in no way related 
to CV. And that's debatable, right? The de I mean, that's not debatable. That's understandable, rather, because the Democrats, they do want more money. They want bigger government. They want more stimulus. And yeah, it makes sense that some of the stimulus may not be for, and there's a lot of other regula not regulations, but there's a lot in the stimulus package. There's a lot of nuance where the money might not even be needed. They're, they're just adding money to, uh, to fund certain things and so forth. You know, you guys have to look deeper into it, but he's saying that, okay, the Democrats, they want more more that's not really related to the crisis here. And, and he said after that, we made a very generous offer of $1.6 trillion. And as usual, she is not negotiating in good faith. And again, this is all Trump's tweet here. Go on his Twitter, follow him. It's important. It's very important as especially in today's day and age, one tweet can change everything like it did today. And obviously, I mean, the stimulus changed it, but his tweet and the way he approached it is uh, it's, it's changing things as well, right? So he's rejecting that $1.6 trillion offer. And he's also, and he's saying here, I'm rejecting their requests, looking to the future of our country. And I have, this is what we said earlier, I have instructed my representatives to stop negotiating until after the election when immediately Immediately after I win, and this is back to, to Trump's ego, love him or hate him, the guy's got a big ego, right? He thinks he's done everything so great. He thinks that he's going to win and so forth. And, and then he says, after I win immediately, we will pass a major stimulus bill that focuses on the hardworking Americans and small business. And there was more to that tweet, but for this video, that is what fits what I want to talk about, right? So at this point, the market's freaked out on that because the markets are expecting stimulus. And we've argued about this and a lot of people, not us necessarily, me and the viewers, but a lot of people out there have been arguing, oh, is there going to be stimulus before the election, after the election? And now with the way Trump's approaching this, and we'll see if it stays this way, obviously it can change. There could be stimulus next week or the week after, but if they stick to this, there might not be stimulus until after the election. So, and, and, and then there's another uh, interesting nuance there because we don't know if Trump's going to win or Biden's going to win. And uh, so there's a lot moving here. So the markets are crashing and, and it's not a crash like, again, oh, the world's ending, but the markets are selling off because this market moves on stimulus. It wants the stimulus. And now that we're not getting it and, and, and potentially not until after the election, you know, the markets are, are tanking. It does not like that because it's baking in, it's kind of, you could argue it's baking in the price of stimulus into the market already. The market's already kind of pricing that in. So overall, that is what crushed the markets today. And I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this ends up going these next couple of weeks, especially leading up to the election, which at this point, it's creeping up on us, guys. It's under what, 30 days away? So it's go time. It's go time. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very volatile next couple of weeks. So like I've been saying in the videos, guys, strap up, get ready. We're on a roller coaster. So S&P down almost 50 points. Dow Jones down almost 400. Not as bad as the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100, but still down about 400. And like I said on the S&P, we got hit at a big resistance, even on the Dow Jones here at 28,200, but we're still holding an, uh, holding an uptrend on this hourly chart. You guys can see it, right? Although we're pulling down, like I said, we're maintaining a higher low potentially, right? If this trend that I'm about to draw ends up holding into tomorrow, right? If this holds, we rally off of this. Hey, it could very well just be a little pull down before we end up rallying. But with the stimulus talk, again, like we just talked about, I'm not too convinced that we're just going to rally back to highs quite yet until we get more clarity on what's going on. So be careful here, guys. Be careful. And for me, I'm in a good amount of cash. I have a good cash position. And we'll go over here what I'm involved with in terms of individual stocks. I'm still playing offense, of course, but I have a pretty good cash position here because I know there's going to be volatility. And we've been talking about this 
on the channel. So let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. What are your thoughts on the market stimulus, the President Trump, uh, President Trump here, uh, Trump versus Biden, whatever? Drop a comment down below. We can chat and uh, just bounce ideas off of each other. And in terms of the Nasdaq 100 here, Nasdaq 100, like we've been talking about. 11,500 is a big resistance. And what do you know? We got rejected there two days ago, three days ago. Um, this was actually, uh, was it, yeah, this was on Friday, I believe. We got rejected at about 11,500. Yesterday, we got rejected at 11,500. And today, yet again, we got rejected at 11,500. So until the NASDAQ 100 breaks that, I am not completely on the bullish side. In fact, it seems like at this point, we might be trading sideways based on this pattern. And like I said yesterday, this could also be a reverse head and shoulder. That's still intact. But now with the stimulus situation, who knows what's going to happen, right? And in terms of that reverse head and shoulder, you guys can see it here, the left shoulder, the head. And this could be the right shoulder. We have to give it some... Uh, wiggle room some time to see what happens but if this ends up selling let's say to 11k bouncing back up going back up to 11.5 and then breaking that that would be a reverse head and shoulder a textbook one and we could be going higher from there and again at this point guys it's going to be a, a roller coaster so strap up be ready be ready for the ride so again let me know your comments down below in the comment section. Now, let's talk about what I personally did today. And the truth is, I didn't do anything. Again, I'm in cash. I have some positions. I'm currently in Virgin Galactic, which I got in yesterday at 21.30. And I'm, I'm so mad at myself, guys. This happens sometimes, and you guys know this for yourselves, but I was literally, and this is right before that tweet and the whole stimulus scenario from earlier happened. I was about, no kidding, I'm serious. I was about to sell out of Virgin Galactic. I had my order open at 2240, literally, guys. And then I got distracted. I went, I did something really quickly. I come back, and then I see this huge red candle. And I didn't have a stop loss or a trailing stop or anything. And my whole entire profit got eaten up. It was one of those days. And uh, and again, it happens. Uh, I'm not too mad about I'm not too mad about it honestly. Again, it happens, but it's a it's a, it's a bit of a, an annoying thing. Um, I, I, I was up a good five percent on my position, and all of a sudden, boom, it tanks, and now I'm actually red on my position. And that goes to show, guys, the stock market is not your friend. If you have a profit, take it right, lock it in. If if you if you're uneasy, that's when you definitely should lock it in. So for me, guys, you know, no one could expect the tweet coming out, but it happened at the exact wrong time for me, at least. And I did not lock in that profit. Now I'm underwater again. My average cost on space right now is uh, 21.3, and we're down to about 21 dollars flat. So no worries. I'm holding on to it. I'm holding through the volatility. And another thing here, guys, is don't panic sell. Again, you can do whatever you want. I'm not a financial advisor, but panic selling in situations like this is typically the wrong thing to do. And, and especially in, in, in general with the stock market, making any any emotional decisions on the fly is the wrong thing to do. One of the best things you could do is kind of step away from your computer. Maybe go take a walk, walk the dog, go make a cup of coffee if you're feeling a bit emotional, frustrated in, in the moment with the market. Just just close your close your computer down. And uh, you'll notice if you do that, it, it really it really helps with your psyche, especially if you're a beginner, right? And and especially if you're already emotionally attached to the market. Like I've said before, me personally, I'm not emotionally connected to the market. I mean, sometimes I am. Again, today I got a little bit mad at myself, but I'm already over it. And the idea is to get over things quickly and to not even let them affect you in the first place. But that takes time. It takes years, quite honestly, guys. You know, I've lost thousands of dollars in the market. It, it, it made me emotional in the past. I've gotten pissed off in the past. But at this point, I understand it's all 
part of the game. And you guys have to understand that as well. So I'm in Virgin Galactic. I'm also still in Workhorse, which we got a leak. I think it was, um, I forget the company, guys. It's slipping my head here. It's, I think it's another SPAC. They had uh, some sort of battery company. They had some sort of investor presentation where Workhorse was listed on one of the USPS vehicles or they, they hinted there that USPS, which we kind of already know this, they're, they're looking to, you know, incorporate a lot of uh, uh, their whole fleet, pretty much almost their whole fleet in electric vehicles, you know, zero combustion engines. And uh, that that brought a lot of speculation that maybe we're going to get the contract sooner than later with Workhorse. And I don't think that caused a lot of hype in the stock. Quite honestly, it didn't even move. And I don't even know if you guys are even aware what I'm talking about. Maybe it's just the niche Workhorse investors that know what I'm talking about. But go look it up. Some article, it wasn't an article, it was uh, an investor presentation where we did get some hints dropped, some breadcrumbs dropped in there about Workhorse and the whole USPS um, scenario here. So I'm in at 24 ish dollars, and I don't really have a plan on selling this one. And I'm also still in EA. And let me tell you guys, I got slammed today with, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Um, I got slammed today with EA. It was down about four and a half percent, down about six dollars. I'm in at 132, and I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to this one, guys. I didn't stop out quite yet. Um, I'm thinking about holding through and uh, adding maybe more. We'll see if it consolidates around 124 tomorrow. If it breaks 124, that's probably where I'd cut my losses on this position. But at this point, I'm holding on, and I'm at I'm in at 131 actually. I think I said 132 before. I'm in 131.20 on uh, Electronic Arts, and I'm still in Apple at about 115. And they have a, a, a an interesting event coming up here on the 13th around their iPhone, I believe. So this is going to be a, a pretty interesting event for Apple, and one and one definitely worth keeping an eye out on. So obviously, guys, today was not a good day for me, right? I lost money on paper. I didn't realize any losses here, meaning I didn't actually sell. So in theory, I didn't I didn't lose money because I'm only down in paper. It's called an unrealized loss. When you take the loss, it's called a realized loss. Those are, you know, trading terms, stock market terms. You'll know once you get deeper into it. I mean, you guys probably already know what that means, right? So uh, that's what I did. Let me know in the comments, what are you guys doing? And if you guys are enjoying the video, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to claim your two free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,600. All you have to do is deposit $100, and that is when you get your two free stocks. So let's get into some other stocks here and talk about what I'm watching for the rest of this week and some interesting news coming out of one stock in particular, which is Boeing, ticker symbol BA. And before we talk about Boeing, let's talk about JD. JD.com here, Chinese e-commerce play, is off about 10 bucks from its highs and you guys can clearly see, I mean, it did well today despite the U.S. markets getting crushed. It, it was up about 30 cents, up 0.4%. And JD overall is breaking out of its downtrend, right? We're in a, a bullish wedge here. You guys can see it. If I draw it, right, you guys can see we were downtrending. We held that 180 SMA, got into this little wedge on this four-hour chart. And ever since then, we've been breaking out, right? And at this point, we pulled back down. We retested 75 at a higher low. And now we're making a move back up, looking to form a cut pattern here on the four-hour, which I think is attractive. And if I honestly think if we take out $76, $77, we might be going back up to the 80s. Uh, honestly, my price target on JD.com here in the short term, after doing some brief TA on it, technical analysis, you know, 82 bucks, I'm thinking we could hit that. You know, 82 and, and from 76 to 82, that's a pretty good uh, profit margin there, about 6%. On ticker symbol JD, again, known as JD.com, an e-commerce play 
over there in China. So I'm liking this breakout here. Now let's talk about Boeing and go a little bit more in depth with what's going on there. Boeing down 7% today, down about $12 per share, clearly getting rejected at about a, a buck 70 here, big resistance on the stock and now we're looking to trend back down to the low 160s high 150s where we have been known to hold over the past couple of weeks pretty much stemming back from the beginning of August right so this is going to be interesting 160 bucks on Boeing what is it going to do there so why did it drop Boeing expects demand for commercial airplanes over the next decade to be 11% lower than what it was forecasting just a little bit over a year ago. A direct result of the economic shock from the current crisis. And long-term growth, well, actually, let me, let me re uh, rephrase that. But, despite this, but long-term growth, despite this, is going to be around... Um, or it's actually going to return after 2030. 2030, guys, that's 10 years from now. So long-term growth, you're going to have to wait 10 years for it to return, the company said on Tuesday. And the company estimates the, uh, estimates the total market for planes, products, and services will be $8.5 trillion over the next decade, down from the $8.7 trillion forecasted a year ago. That's not too much of a change there, about $0.2 trillion. And it projects demand for 18,350 commercial airplanes in the next decade, 11% lower than the comparable 2019 forecast. That's a pretty big chunk there. And it's worth about $2.9 trillion. Many of these will be replacements for existing planes. And over the next 20 years, passenger traffic growth is projected to increase by an average of 4% per year. The global commercial fleet is expected to reach 48,400 by 2039. Wow, that seems so long from now. 2039 up from 25,900 play uh, planes today. So guys, what this is telling me is if you don't have a 10 plus year vision on Boeing right now, if you're not willing to hold through the the, the chaos, the aftermath of what was, uh, you know, th th this crisis, the CV caused, if you're not willing to hold through the aftermath, through the rebuilding of this company and, and, and until travel gets back to normal, which at this point... The, the trends are not looking too good for my research. You know, if you're not willing to do that, I would stay away from Boeing. Boeing is a is a seriously a long term outlook play right now. This is this is you guys heard it for yourselves. 2039. That's almost 20 years from now. That is when they're expecting to reach a, a, a global fleet of 48,400, and that's going to be an average of you know four percent passenger traffic traffic growth per year over the next 20 years so if this is you know if you're expecting to get in and out of boeing in uh three years like a short-term investment yeah it could work out for you the stock price could go back up to 200 300 who knows but i would look elsewhere honestly i would look elsewhere here with boeing but and that's from a long-term perspective, but from a short-term perspective, there could still be money made here. There could definitely still be money made here, especially if 160 holds. You know, we could see a move back up to 170, but my gut feeling is telling me, especially if the markets go lower as a whole, Boeing is going to go lower. And, and if 160 breaks, guys, we might be going to test those 140s, uh, mid-140s, which we just were at about 10 days ago. So if anything, I'm looking at maybe puts here on Boeing, even though I don't really play puts too often. Really, I don't even play them ever, quite honestly. I'm more of a call option guy. I like buying long-term call options on stocks that I'm already long on. And, and we can go over that in a, in a different video. But Boeing here, I'd stay away from it. That's just me. And again, you guys can do anything. This is not financial advice by any means. And Fastly here 
is another one that I want to talk about. Ticker symbol FSLY. Fastly ended up breaking 99 bucks here. Big resistance. Now we're looking to pull down and retake that level as a new support. And this stock did very well today, despite the overall markets tanking. That's a good sign of strength in weak markets. The stock went up almost 5%. So watch out for Fastly. If it holds $100, $98, I think we could be seeing a move back up to the mid-hundreds, maybe even $110 on this particular stock. And Upwork, guys. Good old Upwork. We called this out, did we not? We called this out back in the $14, $15 range. I was buying here in my long-term accounts. I don't have any swing positions open here on Upwork, but either way, we made money on it. I'm up on it. I'm sure you guys made some money on it too if you took this play. And it went from $14, $15, like we called it out, all the way up to about $17, $50, $18, where it was previously to, um, or actually right before or after, right around, let's just say, their previous earnings report. So we took that level out. Now we're trading almost at $20. And I've been getting a lot of questions about this stock. And quite honestly, guys, I'd be careful with it. I think it's very much due for a pull down. We're seeing a bit of a divergence here with um, the RSI. RSI is looking like it's heading off a cliff, but we're still uptrending. So that's a bit of a divergence there. So that scares me in the short term. But if we're able to get down to, let's say, the 17s, mid 17s, even if 17 breaks and we somehow, I don't know if this happens, but let's say we somehow get back to $16, I would end up loading the boat there on Upwork. So Upwork, I'm liking it. Starbucks is another one here I'm watching. If it breaks $89, I think if it breaks $89, it gets into $90. Watch out above. I think Starbucks is going to break out and maybe get back to those all-time highs. Previously, to the crisis at about $94. I think that is very possible. So Starbucks, I'm watching you. And Microsoft is another one that I'm watching here, which overall, if we take a look here, you could argue that on, on the daily chart, I'm just looking at this now, this is looking like potentially a head and shoulder, right? Left shoulder, head, and the right shoulder could be forming now, which is a bit worrisome, especially if 200 breaks on the downside, right? That could be a bad, bad sign for the bulls. And that would probably happen if we got an overall market sell-off, right? As Microsoft is a massive stock, massive company. But on the flip side, let's say we don't, uh, let's say we don't get that head and shoulder, but we end up breaking 210 and ultimately 215. That is where I think Microsoft has a lot of potential, technically speaking, to break out. Because notice, every time recently, other than that run up to 230, um, we've actually failed at about 210 to 215. This is generally a sell zone for Microsoft recently, right? There's a lot of selling pressure here. So I'd like to see it again above 215. That would be my ideal price to get in on the on the upside momentum there. And two more here, guys. INTC Intel is is looking pretty decent. Well, I mean, it was before the whole uh, stimulus uh, scenario here, which caused the market to tank. But um, Intel, I'm still looking at it above 52. It was about to break out again right before this tweet came out. But if 53, 5270, 53 is able to break on INTC, I think this is going to be a, a runner. I think we could end up filling the gap over time up to about $56, which is roughly that old support from back before Intel saw that massive crash after earnings. So I'm watching Intel. Same thing here with DKNG. And like I said yesterday, guys, and, and, and it's slowly coming true here, if DKNG is able to get down to the low 50s, even the mid 50s, but quite honestly, guys, I'd like to see it more at the low 50s. I'm interested in a position, right? Anywhere from $50, $52, that is where I'd start buying. And let's say if it breaks that point, 50 52 we might be going lower, maybe even the mid-40s. Mid-40s, I think, is a load-the-boat 
um, 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 area here for DKNG. That's just my opinion. That'd be putting it right here at the 180 SMA on the four hour chart. And it'd be putting it right at old highs for it to hold it as a new support. So we'll, we'll see what happens, guys. Overall, that is it for the stocks in this video. Let me run through them very quickly. We talked about JD.com. Uh, Boeing, Fastly, Upwork, Starbucks, Microsoft, Intel, DKNG, Apple, EA, Workhorse, and Virgin Galactic. So, yeah, get ready, strap your seatbelts. It's going to be a roller coaster. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Do not forget to claim your two free stocks from Webull, valued up to $1,600 with a deposit of $100. That's linked right down below in the description box. Thanks again for watching. I really, really do appreciate all of you guys out there. You guys, the support, it means a lot to me. Stay safe. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.